Yeah, it's interesting. If you look at self managed super funds across the whole of the self managed super fund market, um, you get a picture that hasn't changed very much over the last probably 10 years, in fact. Um, the percentages around different asset classes haven't moved all that much. Um, so, for example, you see a predominance for Australian listed securities about 30 to 32 um, percent of all SMSFs on average. Um, 30 to 32 percent of all SMSF assets are listed shares, direct Australian shares. About 30 to again 35, it varies a little from year to year, but about 30 percent at the moment uh, is in cash and term deposits. And around the 16 to 17 percent is in direct property, either commercial property, which makes up most of it, probably about 12 percent, and um, and residential property, which makes up the balance. And then um, uh, you then have a few uh, smaller allocations to things like international investments, which is probably about only about one percent of SMSF assets, and about the same for unlisted shares as well. So it doesn't add up to 100, but about 78, 80 percent of all um, SMSFs assets are invested in either cash or or um, Australian shares or direct Australian property. That hasn't so how, changed very much. Now, on a fund by fund basis, that will obviously change, but as an average across the uh, the sector, that's pretty much where they've sat pretty consistently now for quite a number of years. Whether they're more professional or not is an interesting question because, in fact, SMSS have been outperforming that particular sector year on year as well. But putting that aside, in terms of the professional investors, clearly um, there's a reduced exposure to Australian equities. Uh, it's probably closer to the low 20s um, and a much higher exposure to international shares, as you would expect. Um, again, probably similar sorts of uh, percentages, you know, around the 15 to 20 percent. Um, and uh, a, a lower exposure or smaller exposure, I suppose, direct property, but clearly uh, property trusts figure much much more highly with uh, with the larger managed funds and, and industry funds and so on, and a reduced exposure to cash as well. Um, so so it, it very much demonstrates, as you pointed out, the, the sort of the, the, the touch of the professional investment industry um, in choosing where they uh, invest. No, I think it's still money that hasn't hasn't moved or isn't moving all that quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So as I said, there is actually as a percentage, there's more money sitting in cash and term deposits than there is in any other asset class in self money super funds still. What we have seen a drift away from is where self money super funds have been set up and cash has been put in and no investment has been done. I think that's a far less common scenario these days. Um, so I think the decision to stay in cash is very much a conscious one rather than one of just not having an interest or not really knowing where to invest their money, which may well have been the case 15 years ago. Um, so, But it is interesting. Um, I, I think it's very true to say that trustees of self-managed super funds are looking for alternatives for cash now, particularly term deposits. And I think, you know, term deposits were great when they were paying 8%, but clearly they're paying, you know, less than 4% um, now. And so um, that's not a great great return. Even even if you put, you know, commit your money for a five-year term deposit, you're really only getting, you know, a bit over four or perhaps five at the best. So um, there are alternatives. There is a, a, a growing interest in perhaps a retail, a retail bond market, for example, as an alternative um, to a fixed interest style investment that um, that may be available to self-managed super fund trustees. Unfortunately, that's very, uh, either doesn't exist or is very much in, in its infancy in terms of a an asset class, you know, the retail version of it, um, and clearly the the wholesale um, market in in government and semi-government bonds. Minimum dollars are such that uh, you know they're not very practical for self managed superannuation funds. Yeah, it's again it's surprising, and and again it's an average result rather than an individual fund result. But um, APRA published some. Uh, comparisons of returns between um, self-managed super funds and other superannuation arrangements. Um, in particular, I think it was funds with $50 million or more. And um, apart from one year, over the last eight years, I think it is, um, self-managed super funds have outperformed uh, the larger fund sector by about somewhere around about the 2% mark on an annual basis. Now, again, that's across the sector, and clearly there will be examples where self-managed super funds haven't outperformed and others that have significantly outperformed, but as an average across the board, 
it would appear that self money super funds have performed at about the 2% mark better each year um, compared to their um, alternatives in the market. Well, one of the one of the things the, the main reasons people go into the self money super fund market is is when they one have a, a reasonable amount of money invested in superannuation, and there is some controversy and conjecture around what that number is, be it 150,000 or 350,000 or somewhere in between. But I think the the thing that comes through and one of the drivers for that outperformance, given that the average fund size now is over a million dollars, the average self money super fund find is over a million dollars. The, the costs of the annual audit, the annual accounts, um, you know, the administration fees if they choose to use an administrator, are very much a fixed cost regardless of the number of dollars in the fund itself. So the bigger the fund, the cheaper it is um, to run compared to you know, managed fund alternatives and other alternatives in superannuation. And, and so uh, I think you know, the fact that the average account uh, fund size is now well over the million dollar mark. Um, which is a reasonable amount of money to have invested, um, but the costs are, are reasonably static. Um, is one um, is one factor that adds towards um, that outperformance. I think perhaps another one um, is is their flexibility and 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 the ability to move and implement uh, investment decisions in response to changing market conditions fairly quickly. Um, trustees are. You know, they are choosing how to invest their own money. Um, they certainly don't need or, or have a legal requirement to refer to anyone else. Um, and so they can move their money from from different asset classes if they believe that asset class is under threat. And I think one of the things that seems to have come out uh, in surveys of uh, trustees and self-managed super funds is they have a real hunger and desire to do research in relation to the, the various asset classes they invest in. Yes, yeah, so there's a number of um, clear differences here. I suppose the first one is that um, you uh, have a, a greater freedom potentially of the types of investments you can make. So typically in self managed superannuation funds, it's at an area where they where they do hold a reasonable percentage, about 16, 17% of all SMSF assets are in direct property. And so, and commercial property at that, and, and often um, property owned by business owners. And for small business owners, um, the prospect of owning their business real property inside their self managed super fund and renting that property off their self managed super fund is is a great strategy and one that is is um, used by many small business owners um, not only to you know uh, provide a property for their business um, but it also provides an, another funding source for their retirement because they have from the business because the business is paying rent to the self managed super fund. And that rent is in addition to any contribution caps they might also be making in relation to, you know, key employees of the business, and uh, and so that that uh, is also I think driving um, some investment decisions in self managed super funds. That tends to mean because these are, tend to be expensive assets, that you may end up with a, a fairly concentrated um, investment portfolio in some self managed super funds that lacks diversification and perhaps even lacks liquidity. And that's something that does need to be addressed over time in the self managed super fund um, arena. It, it's true. Um, clearly, uh, uh, um, a lack of diversification can can be a real issue um, for any investor, be they a self managed super fund or be they someone who's investing directly in their own own, um, own right. But uh, I think the important thing to emphasise here is single asset strategies are acceptable as far as the regulator is concerned. So. Um, well, well, certainly that lack of diversification, lack of liquidity would need to be addressed in the investment strategy of the fund um, by the trustees and, and there'll have to be some sort of plan to, to address those, those issues over the longer term. Um, the regulator is not overly concerned per se that um, a large proportion of the fund's assets may be tied up in a single, single asset and they certainly aren't uh, requiring trustees to um, to greater diversify their, their investment portfolios. <music>